Okay, this teaching is going to be on Matthew 13. He taught parables in this chapter. And in verse 1, we're going to begin with verse 1. And it says, The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. Now before we go any further, why do you think the Lord put in there the same day? Did you did y'all ever think about that? Why didn't he just start off saying he came out of the house and sat by the seaside? He put the same day because he wants you to know what happened earlier that day. That's why I said when you read the Bible, read it. So if we go back to chapter 12, I'm going to give you a quick review over it. It's uh, Jesus was healed a man that was possessed with the devil. He was blind and he was dumb. And Jesus healed him. And the people that were around there, and he had a multitude of people around him at this time. When they saw that, they questioned themselves. And they said, is not this the son of David? And what they were saying there, is this the Messiah? Because they said, is not this the son of David? Not a son of David, but the son of David. Because they knew that the Messiah was going to come through the bloodline of David. So that's why they said, is this not the son of David, the Messiah? And as soon as they said that, right away, the religious leaders said, no, this is not the son of David. This is a devil. The religious leader called Jesus a devil. This is the devil casting out demons. Now, as soon as they said that, it put question in the people's mind. Put question in their mind, okay? Because today, if a religious leader tells you something, it doesn't matter what denomination it's in, but if you go to this denomination, whatever it is, if the pastor, the priest, preacher, whatever, is standing, whoever's standing up there, if they say something, pretty much nobody's going to question them. Because he's the pastor. He's the preacher. He's the priest. And we think they're without fault. Jesus says a little further down in verse 30 of chapter 12. He says, he that is not with me is against me. Because he knew what was going on. And he's telling them, he that is not with me is against me. And it goes with what Amos 3.1 says. Amos, Amos 3.1 says, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? So the Lord's saying, how can you walk with me if we can't be in agreement? So can you see there's no middle? Right. Can you see there's no gray? You're either in or out. You're either in. Oh yeah, either you believe them and accept them, or you stay with your religious leaders and believe them. Have your faith in man instead of the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this what this that's why the Lord said that. Okay, y'all want to believe those religious leaders? Go ahead. But you're against me. So this is what's happening in in chapter 12. We also see from this chapter that the devil has a kingdom. Because they said the devil and his kingdom. But also says that Jesus has a kingdom. In verse 28, and he, Jesus says, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. Now I'm going to get more on that a little later on in, in, the, in the teaching. But remember what it says right here. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come upon up on to you. Remember that. So we see that Jesus, with all his miracles he performed, healing the sick, bringing them in from life to death, casting out demons, anyone in their right mind should see that this must be the Messiah. Raising the dead. Do you hear me? <coughs> Raising the dead. Healing the sick. Casting out demons. All this should have told the people, this has got to be the Messiah. That's why the Lord says, because uh, there's a place in the Bible, I don't remember where it's at, but it says, show us a sign. The Lord said, you won't believe, and if, even if I show you a sign, you won't believe. He said, oh, there's one sign I'll give you, and that's the sign of Jonah. But Jesus knew that signs were not going to save him. Because look, he, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. Raised the dead. Is that, I mean, how much more of a sign can you get? And they still had doubt. Those who listen to false religious leaders, they're hard in your hearts. Your heart will be hardened against this. If you're going to believe them, believe me, your heart, your heart will get hardened against the Word of God. So we, people today, people who are listening to this teaching, you need to make up your mind 
Am I going to follow the Word of God? Or am I going to follow the tradition of my family who's, who's been this denomination for years and years and years and, I'm a, and that's, what I, that's where I'm going to stay? Now, some of it's okay. Not all religions out there are bad. But you still got to put the Lord, the Word of God, before the man. Because remember, that priest, that preacher, that pastor is a man. So don't ever put a man over the Word of God. Verse 2. And a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. That's why I said in chapter 12 it talked about a lot of people following him. And right here is it continues. A great multitude was following him. And the, and the, and the crowd was getting bigger and bigger, larger and larger. And that's why he had to do it outside. Because at the beginning of his ministry, he was in the, uh, the temple, the synagogue. But he, his, gather, his following, not, not born again followers, but the people started to follow him. And why? They were following him because he was healing them. He was feeding them. They were receiving. And that's why they were following him. Not because they became believers. Because just, the, I would say the same crowd that was following him then was the same crowd that was saying crucified him. So they were following because they were receiving. In verse 3, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Now I'm going to read these verses here, and we'll explain them later, but I'm, I'm just going to read the verses right now. Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, there's two ways of hearing. We got our physical hearing, right? This is one way to hear. But then we got our spiritual hearing also. The more you read and study your Bible, the more you'll be able to hear the Lord spiritually. You'll, like people say, how do you know when the Lord is speaking to you? Well, most people can't explain it. And most people say, well, it's just that still small voice. Well, it is, and only you can hear it. And you'll know, you'll know, you'll know when you get to that age, you'll know when the Lord's speaking to you. Okay? Young Christians, you know, it's a, it's a little hard for, for young Christians because they're, you know, you got you to gotta get deep into the Bible. When I say deep, I'm talking about no more than just what it takes to be saved. There's more to the Bible than just getting saved. There's a lot more we need to learn. And the more you learn, the easier it is to hear from God because then you know the Scriptures. When you know the Scriptures, the Lord, what's He say? He brings them back to your remembrance. Okay? Oh, yeah. He said in whatever, whatever book, oh, yeah, that's what He said there. So that's why we need to read this. So we can get it in here, put it here, and then when, it, when we need it, the Lord will bring it back to us in remembrance. So we have our spiritual hearing. Verses 19 through 23 will explain these, what this parable means. But I'm, I'm going to still continue with verse 10. I'll get back to explaining these when we get to verses 19 through 23. Now verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? In Luke 8, 9, Luke, Luke chapter 8 and Mark chapter 4, Remember the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they say the same thing. It's the Gospels. Those, those four are talking about the same time. And in Luke 8, verse 9, it speaks about the same parables. But in, that, in Luke 8, 9, it doesn't say, Why speakest thou them in parables? It says, What might this parable mean? So they were, they were asking, What does this parable mean? And the, the Old Testament prophesied that Jesus would speak in parables. In Psalm 78, 2, it says, I will open my mouth in parable. And he did that to fulfill the scriptures. Because that's what Psalm said. The reason for parables is 
to let the believers have understanding. The believers, for us to have understanding of God's word. And the religious and non-believers, the religious people, remember, I've told you many times, there's a difference between being religious and being a Christian. Religious people live by traditions. Christians live by the word of God. So the religious people and the non-believers, it was so they couldn't understand. And the Bible says it in 1 Corinthians 2.14. But the natural man, meaning the lost person, the natural man is not a born-again Christian. It says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, even in 1 Corinthians it says that, the natural man can't understand it. He can't understand what the Word of God says. For it is spiritually discerned. He, He cannot understand it. Because he don't have the Holy Spirit. How many of us know we need the Holy Spirit to understand God's Word? You need to be born again, receive the Holy Spirit in you, so you can understand the Word of God. We need it. We need it. We need the Holy Spirit. It gives us understanding. It gives us power. Again, I'm sorry. Most Christians do not use the power of the Holy Spirit. Most Christians, and I say this because I'm out there. I go to church, I see Christians. Christians that I just know on the street. I see this. I see they live a defeated life. We got the power of God in us. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. Jesus is God. So I can say, you have the power of God in you. (laughs) Praise God. I mean, can we comprehend that? We have the power. You have the power of God in you. (laughs) That's, once we can comprehend that, We can live a victorious life, I'm telling you. Verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now, in Matthew 13, Luke 8, and Mark 4, teach the same parable, like I said. But in Matthew, it says right here, the kingdom of heaven. In Luke and in Mark, it says the kingdom of God. Now, don't let that confuse you. Because they mean exactly the same thing. Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God is the same. All right. So when you're reading your, the four gospels, and you see kingdom of God, and then kingdom of heaven is the same. All right. Don't let that confuse you. Now there are two different kinds of kingdoms. One is where God is when we die, and the other one is Jesus. Because like I just read that verse a while ago. The kingdom has come upon you. It was Jesus speaking. He's speaking, the kingdom has come upon you. But I'll say more on that. In, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5 8, we are confident, I say, and willing whether to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. So as soon as we die, as soon as we die, we're absent from this body and we're present with the Lord. That's in God's kingdom. As soon as we die, we're in God's kingdom. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. As soon as, as soon as you stop breathing, as soon as his heart stops, you're present with the Lord. It says it right here. Matthew 12, 28. <clears throat> now this is back to Jesus. But I'm going to say it again. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come onto you. And I'll say it again in Luke chapter 17, verse 21. It says... Neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. (laughs) You got that? Got it. So there's two kingdoms. Jesus is one of them. So that's why it says up here, the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God. That's Jesus. And the mystery is is that the Jews expected a king to come. That's the mystery. The mystery is that Jews expected a king. And they have every right to believe that because in the Old Testament, in Psalms 24, it talks about a king coming. So they had every right to believe that the Messiah was going to be a king coming. But then they forgot the scriptures that uh, in Isaiah uh, chapter 52 and 53, it talks about him coming as a servant. So they didn't, like I said, we, we remember the scriptures that we like. Scriptures that really don't, mm, we kind of forget. And I think that's what happened to them. Because in Isaiah, it does say that he was going to come as a servant. And that he was going to go through all this, and he did. But they wanted the king. 
They didn't want the servant. They wanted the king. So that's why the Jews did not accept Jesus as the Messiah. Since he didn't come as a king, oh, well, then this ain't him. Now you see why the Jews don't believe in Jesus as being the Messiah. They weren't looking for the Messiah to free them from sin. They were looking for a Messiah, the king, to free them from the nations that had them under bondage. They wanted to be their own nation. They wanted to have their own freedom and their own kingmanship. So that's why they didn't accept him as a servant. And that's a little bit about the Jews, now that you know. Now Jews are getting saved. Everybody can get saved, everybody. There's no one out there that God cannot save. Okay, we know that. So the Jews, there are Jews that are getting saved. And like I said before, just now, they're not looking for them like we did to forgive us of our sins so we could go be with them. They're looking for them because they want to rule. They want to rule themselves, just like the Babylonians had rule over them. The Egyptians had rule over them. Well, they wanted to be in that place. So their heart wasn't in the right place with the Lord anyway. Because that's what there was one. Verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. If you have a little light. The Lord will give you more light. But right here it says. But to him who hath. Whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away. So if you. If you have this, and a lot of people are this way, they don't read it. They have it, but they don't read it. And when it says, and the Lord will take, even him shall be taken away, even that he hath. It's not that he takes it away with it. The person himself does not want it anymore. Now, we're going to be talking about the fruits. We're going to be talking about the fruits in a little bit, and we're going to, we're going to see more on that, okay? But those whose heart is not right, for they're just acting. There's a lot of actors out there. There's a lot of actors. The Lord said there's a lot. They're, Christ, they're, they're so-called Christians, but only here, not here. Okay, only in the brain, and not in the heart. They think it, they act it, they might even speak it, but it's not in the heart. A hardened heart is one that you give to yourself. The Lord doesn't give you a hardened heart. You give yourself the hardened heart. Whether it's because you lost or you just don't want to accept the Lord. You know, you just don't want to accept the Lord. You want to do your thing. And the more you do your own thing or your friends' things or your family things or your tradition things, the, the further your heart will get from this. It's already far from this. Remember I taught you on the heart? The Lord said the heart is wicked. So if you have a wicked heart, it's a hard heart against the Lord. So it's not really, you're not really running from this and it's getting hard. Really, it's hard already. It's already hard until you give your heart to the Lord. But until you do that, you have a hardened heart. Like I said, I've, I've taught on that. The Bible plainly says what our heart is. Many verses where he gave us. He said, this is your heart without me. And it's true. And let me just say something about that. We as Christians, if our heart is right with the Lord... We do not walk around with our nose up in the air. I'm a born again believer. I'm a Pentecostal and I have spoken in tongues. Now I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I only say it because it's true. You got many Pentecostals who walk around with their nose up in the air. Baptists, same thing. Once saved, always saved. Oh, I'm a saved person. I can do this and I can do that, but I'm saved. No matter what I do, I'm saved. Because they believe once saved, always saved. Which is true. But if it's you're really saved. have you? Did you really get saved? Because if you really got saved, then you wouldn't be committing all that sin. Thinking, oh, well, I'm saved anyway, so I'm going to heaven. No, no there's, a balance, there's, there's a balance there. But what I'm saying is, Christians, Christians, remember this. God, because of His grace and His mercy... Because of that, because of Him, we are who we are today. Saved people. We're still sinners. We still have evil thoughts, just like the lost people. But we got the Holy Spirit to help us get rid of it, to, to fight it. Okay? Because it's going to be there. Because we're born in a sin nature. 
Okay, we were born in a sin nature. Don't think you are better than other people because we're, we're Christians. That's not the way the Lord, our Lord did it. So don't ever, don't ever look at other people and think you're better than them because it's only because of God's grace and mercy that we are where we are. Because if there's anybody here who thinks they deserve it, you're on the wrong track. You don't know the heart of God. We're not snobby people. The Lord was not snobby. Because we're in the, we could be exactly in the same boat with them. And it's not because you deserved it. You do not want... Because if you go that way, your heart will start going in the wrong direction. Like Pharaoh. God foreseen everything. God knows the future. He's already told us the future. Here. He told us all about tribulation. He told us about the millennium. He's told us about the new earth. He's told us... So he's foreseen everything. He foreseen that Pharaoh over Egypt, he saw that Pharaoh would not give his heart to the Lord. He saw that. He saw Pharaoh was going to have a hard heart and, and keep it. So that's why he used Pharaoh. He said, so, well, since Pharaoh's going to be that way, I'm going to use him to show people my power. God didn't make Pharaoh that way. I'm going to make him, uh, I'm going to give him a hard heart so I can show my power. No, he already knew that Pharaoh was not going to change his, his, his heart to the Lord. So he said, since, since I know he's not going to give his life to me, I'm going to use him to show people my power. So the Lord does not give you a hard heart. He doesn't give anybody a hard heart. We, we have a hard heart. It's because that's what we want. But we don't look at it that way. But it is. The way you live. Now, now I'll, just one more thing on that hard heart. Is it can also come. It can also come from whatever is being taught to you or preached to you. And you don't obey it, you're on that road. Okay, listen to me. When you're being preached to, or or you're being taught, and it's something you don't like, and you don't obey it, you're going down the wrong road. God wants obedience. Obedience. That's what He wants more more than anything. He wants that more than tithing. He wants that more than any kind of sacrifice you can give Him. He wants obedience. That's number one on God's list. He wants your obedience. And as soon as we go away from that, we're on the road that's not going to God. Now I'll start at 13. But remember those things I just said. Remember those. Everything that, that the Lord has given me to tell y'all, plant it in your heart. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other ear. Plant it in your heart. These are the words of God. He's given me what to say. Believe me, he's giving it to me. Because if, uh, if, if I was up here thinking, okay, well, I think I can... No, no. There's no way that I would get up here on my own. Amen. Because there's no way I can explain the Word of God without him. And believe me, I take it very seriously when God says he's going to hold me accountable for everything I say to y'all. And I'm going to even talk about that a little further down. Verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables... Because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall, not, ye shall see, and shall not perceive. There's nothing wrong with these ears. Now some people are deaf. But in this room, all of us have ears, Right? We all can hear. There's nothing wrong with hearing. There's nothing wrong with our eyes. But to the lost people, like I, like I said earlier, they cannot understand the Word of God because the devil has blinded them. But it's because that's what they want. Because the Lord, and like I told you before, in chapter 1 of John, He says, I will enlighten the heart of all men. So there's nobody, there's nobody can stand before Jesus and say, I didn't know. He has enlightened every man. I don't care if they're in the middle of the jungle out in Africa or whatever. The Lord enlightened. He said, I will enlighten myself to all men. When he said all, that's all. There's nowhere God cannot show himself. And he shows him, just like y'all born again Christians, it's because he showed himself to y'all. So don't think the Lord is stopping us from understanding. He wants us to understand. And the next verse tells us why they, why they can't understand. The lost people. Verse 15. 
For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull, are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. They. I got that underlined. Did the Lord close them? No, it says right here, they have closed their eyes. So it's us who make the choice. We make the choice on whether our eyes be open to the Lord or they be shut to the Lord. Right here it says it. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. The people have hardened hearts. Why? Because they have closed their ears and they have shut their eyes. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded. Who is the God of this world? Of this world. Devil. Is the devil. He's the prince of the air. Ephesians 2.2 2. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the eyes of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. These people want to act religious, but their hearts are not with the Lord. Their hearts are on their own. What's the Lord said? You've got to die to self to be with Him. We've got to die ourselves. We've got to take our heart, take our heart that is wicked, and give it to the Lord, and He'll change it. We can't change it. He can. So if you got people out there, well, I want to clean up my life before I give it to the Lord. Huh. That's not going to happen. They can't clean up their life. Only the Lord can clean up your life. Give you the power to clean it up. But they who want to understand, when they open their hearts and start hearing and start seeing and turn from their wicked ways, they're the ones who are born again. Those who want, those who want to see and those who want to hear those are the ones who want to give their heart to the Lord and become born again. And when you're born again, it says what it says right here, and I should heal them. Sin is sickness. Sin is sickness. And right here it says, I will heal them. I will heal their wicked heart. Now maybe I, sh I should give a little background teaching on that one that I did about our heart. But the Bible plainly says many times that our heart is wicked. And it profits us nothing, nothing. When we're not with the Lord. When we don't give it to the Lord. But right here it says. We should be converted. Born again. And should be healed. Our, our heart will be healed by Him. 16. But blessed are your eyes. For they see. And your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you. That many prophets and righteous men. Have desired to see those things which ye see. And have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Now right here, you're thinking, prophets and righteous men, they didn't see? Well, it's talking about the men in the Old Testament, the prophets, the righteous men in the Old Testament. They spoke about Jesus. They spoke about Him coming. They, the, the Old Testament, like I said before, the, the Old Testament is all about Jesus. But they didn't get to see Him. And that's what it's talking about here. It was not because they were uh, lost and not really there or backslidden. No, it, they talked about them, but they didn't see them. And that's what this is saying here, okay? When it says prophets and righteous men had desire to see them, <clears throat> but they didn't, it's, only, it's because it, they were prophesying about the one who was going to come, the Messiah. So they didn't get to see the Messiah, like John the Baptist, like Paul, Peter. You take all the prophets, that's who he's talking about. They talked all about Jesus, but they didn't get to see him. Okay, so you understand that verse, what it's saying? Verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. The sower is anyone who preaches the word. Okay, remember that. The sower is anyone who preaches the word. Witnesses. People who witness preach, whatever you want to call it. And the ground or the the ground in the in the parable is the people who are lost. Now I'm gonna start with verse nineteen. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. The wayside is the edge of the field. You got your field 
and you they you know they spread back then they had to spread the seed by hand. So when they spread it by hand, of course, some of it's going to fall off the field. That's the wayside, and when you're the wayside is where they all walked. So the hard the ground was hard there. Okay, y'all with me so far? The ground was hard, and it, it says wayside. The wayside is where the seed fell, but it wasn't on the soil. It was on the hard ground because that's where everybody walked. And the seed couldn't penetrate through the hard ground. Let's talk about our hearts. Couldn't penetrate. This person who hears and takes it to heart but doesn't understand, and the word doesn't penetrate it, and the devil, it says the devil comes and takes it away. They heard it, but they didn't get it here. When we're talking about the heart. A lot of this is about the heart. They heard it, but they didn't get it here. It was on hard ground, and what I've been talking about, a hard heart. So what happened? The devil came along and took it away. Because it wasn't grounded in the heart, in the soil. And so the first problem, in this first problem, we found that the heart is too hard. That's someone who, who just doesn't want to hear about the Lord. They just don't want to hear it. That's a hard heart. They just don't want to hear it. Verse 20. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon, with, which means with no problem, with joy receive it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth, because of the word, by and by he is offended. Here the heart is still a hardened heart. It's still a hard heart. Because it's still fallen on stone. It's got a little ground above it. But it said on stony places, right? So what are we talking about? A hard heart. Okay, so it's, it's, it falls on the heart, a stony heart. But it does have a little ground above it, which is very shallow. For the seed to grow, what... When you plant a seed, what does it, where does it go first to grow? It goes down. Once it goes down and makes roots, then it blossoms. Right here, it had no ground. It had very little ground. Not enough ground to take it in. So again, it was here. They heard it. Remember I talked to you all about an apostate person. is a person who acts, speaks, and only the Lord knows the difference. Because we can't. It's like Judas. Judas was a disciple. He walked with disciples. He walked with the Lord. He acted just like them. But at the end, what happened? He betrayed his own Lord. That's an apostate person. Someone who can do all that. Well, someone who can blend in, but is not there from the heart. A person who has head knowledge. And they even do the things Christians do. But it doesn't last. Sooner or later, they're back to their self, doing their own thing. And they've never really totally given their heart to the Lord. But there's a lot of people who don't give 100%. They walk down the aisle. They might even go get baptized. But they haven't done it from here. Just like the people who are listening here in this chapter. They believe because they are seen with their eyes, but not with their heart. And because they're not rooted, the root didn't take like I said, we're talking about shallow ground. It did not take to the heart. So like religious leaders who put doubt, they put doubt in people's minds. Just like back here. These religious, this was the religious leaders that told the people that Jesus was the devil. Religious leaders. Do y'all hear me? Religious leaders did that. Not some devil worshiper. Not some atheist. Do y'all hear me? It was a religious leader that led them that way. Do you think it's any different today? No. Because the Bible plainly says there's wolves out there in sheep's clothing. There's wolves. He didn't say wolf. He said wolves. So watch who you listen to. Watch who you listen to. Whoever you're sitting under, preacher or teacher, whoever you're sitting under, you check them out. Because there's wolves out there. And they're dressed in sheep's clothing. Don't take it for granted just because they have the title. Oh, well, this is, this is a man of God. No. First Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7 says to rejoice and to be happy and endure trials for a while. He says, rejoice and be happy because you're going to endure trials for a while. For a while. 
If we live to be 100, 150 years old, that's still just a while. Because remember, heaven is forever. Heaven is forever. So if we live to be 200 years old, it's still just a little while. So the Lord says, for, even for a while, we have to endure the trials that come our way. And not only endure them, He says to rejoice and to be happy in them. Amen? Amen. Can we do that? Don't say anything because you won't know until the time comes. When the time comes, when it does hit you, then you can, then you'll know. Then you'll know where your heart is. The Lord will show you where your heart is. These tests, these trials are tests to separate the believer from the non-believer by the fruits you show when you're going through them that you're still standing strong in the Lord. Remember, I've told you several times, we're known by our fruits. If I look at somebody out there and I just don't see the fruits of a Christian, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say he's not a Christian. He doesn't have the fruits. I don't care if he says I'm Christian a hundred thousand times. If I don't see the fruits of a Christian in him, and like I said, we're going to get more on that, but we're known by our fruits. Remember that. We're known by our fruits. So the second problem here, the heart is still hard. They do believe, but they believe here. Yeah. They don't believe here. They believe in the mind, but they don't believe in the heart. Okay, that was the second problem. Verse 22. He also that received the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Notice there's nothing wrong with the seed and there's nothing wrong with the sower. The seed, like I said, is the word of God and the sower is the believer. So there's nothing wrong with the seed and there's nothing wrong with the sower because we're like what I'm doing now, I'm preaching you the Word of God. Or when we witness to people, we're witnessing, witnessing what the Word of God says, right? So it's not the Word, and it's not us. So the, sow, the sower and the seed is good. And the farmer, who, who has the field, looks at the field, and he can't see that the soil is bad. You know, he, he can't see it. Now he knows the seed's good, and he knows those who, who spread the seed, he knows it's down. So it's all good. And of course we're speaking about the heart of a lost person. The soul. The, the soil. But these are... these. <clears throat> excuse me. But because of the world, which teaches money, is what, is what gets you through life. Don't you... I mean, y'all know that, right? The world thinks. The world believes money is what gets you through life. And this is what we're talking about up here. The riches. Okay? This is what we're talking about. So the world, they preach to you, you won't make it in life, got to have money. If you don't have money, you ain't going nowhere, and you're nothing. That's what the world teaches. So we need to see, okay, what's, the, what's stronger? Our desire to have money, riches, or our desire to have faith in God? You need to ask yourself that. Just how important money is to me. Do I need a lot of money to be happy? Or do I need the Lord to be happy? Like I said, the world would say, hey, you need money. Forget the Lord. What's He going to do for you? You need money. Money can get you what you need. That's the world. That is the world. Having money is not wrong. Okay? There's nothing wrong with having money. But it's how you use it. Just like this TV. There's nothing wrong with watching this TV. Unless I put pornography on there. Then it's wrong. It's the same with money. There's nothing. If you got money, it's a good thing. But when you're thinking, when you put the money before the Lord, when your faith is in that money instead of the Lord, that's when you're going wrong. People who have faith in money are going on what the world has taught them. Because what happened to the rich man that Jesus spoke to? He said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. What happened to the rich man? He walked away and he ended up in prison, in hell. Because money was more important to him than being a Christian, being a child of God. Don't let money destroy your walk with the Lord. I say this because I've seen it. I've seen people out there, if you don't have money and you don't have the material things, you're a failure. You hear me? You're a failure. But guess what? John the Baptist didn't have nothing. Lived in the wilderness, didn't have nothing. Ate locusts, but he was the richest man on earth. Why? Why? Because his heart was for the Lord. And because of that, he's going to spend eternity where? 
streets of gold. <laughs> huh? So these people who think that way about money now, that's just temporary. All of this is just temporary. Money's temporary. Possessions are just temporary things. Where your heart is with the Lord, that's the richest you can get. Because that's going to last forever. Forever. For the rest of your life. It's not temporary. So this person has no fruit. In, chap in this chapter right above this one, it says in verse 33, Jesus says, Now listen, either make the tree good and his fruits good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruits. Did y'all hear that? The tree is known by his fruits. Jesus is saying either make yourself right with him and have good fruit or stay evil and have evil fruit because you're known by your fruit, the way you live. So when we go out there tomorrow and we're in the world, what kind of fruit, and this is, this is for y'all, don't say nothing, but what kind of fruit are they going to see? Are they going to see good fruit from you? Or are they going to see fruit that the world produces. Well, you act just like the world. I mean, you talk about this and having that and blah, blah. So what kind of fruit are these people going to see on you tomorrow when you go to work? Are you just out there? Better check yourself out. Where's my fruits? Now the Beatitudes, we taught on that. And the Beatitudes, that's fruits of a strong, born, again Christian. I got to make a CD on that because... There's people who want to hear it, and I still haven't made it yet. But that was a good teaching, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a good teaching. And it was a teaching that people thought they knew. Yeah. Blessed are those who mourn. We always looked at it as people who die, you know. It doesn't, say any, it doesn't have anything to do with people who die. We should mourn over our sin. If we sin, that should make, it, that should make us act like someone did die. That's how bad we should take it. When we sin, we should mourn over it. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Lord. I mean, it should really get to you that you did that sin. It's not because somebody died. It's because of the sin you, you did. That was a good teaching. The Beatitudes, well, that was a good teaching. So the third problem here was the person good, couldn't give up his riches. Just couldn't give them up. He had to have his material things. He had to have his money. He had to have it more than the Lord. Verse 23. But he that receiveth the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understands it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Out of the four seeds that it's talking about, three of them, it didn't reach the heart. Three of them, the heart was hard, didn't want it. This one, he was the same thing. Okay, we're talking about lost people who did not receive the word of God, right? Now this man here, he was just as lost as the others, but he wanted, to, he wanted to give his heart to the Lord. He was different from the other, uh, the other three. This one allowed the Word of God to reach his heart, his heart. He understood what God did for him, and he wanted to change his life, and he wanted to bring forth fruit. And this fruit that we're talking about here in this verse is talking about souls. Christians who win other souls to the Lord. That's right here. This is the fruit that it's talking about. Because it says, Which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some hundred, some thirty, some sixty. It's talking about souls. The fruit is winning people to the Lord. In this verse, this is what it's talking about. And Psalms, now listen, Psalms 126, verses 5 and 6. They that sow, those who witness, in tears shall weep in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, Beareth precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoice, bringing his sheaves with him. The Lord is saying right here, when you witness to someone, this is the way you do it. Have tears in your eyes, because you know this person's laws. You know where this person is going, which I've told y'all before many times. But right here in Psalms, he says, but you will weep in joy. You will, because this person will hear you. Will hear you. Now, we might not see it. He might not accept the Lord, or she might not accept the Lord right then and there. But someone else came and watered the seed another time. And it might take someone else to water that again. I don't know how many times it needs to be watered, but sometimes it's one time. Sometimes it might have to be watered ten times. But the person does come. Now this is what it's talking about. The seed that you plant sometimes takes root right then and there, but sometimes it doesn't. 
It's not until later. So don't think you're witnessing. When you're witnessing somebody and they didn't accept the Lord, don't think you're a failure. Because the fruit might come later. And this is something I had to learn. Because when I first started uh, witnessing and people wouldn't accept the Lord, I'd get mad. <laughs> I'd get mad. And I'd get mad at myself because they didn't. But the Lord showed me. Now, oh, wait a minute. I just told you to plant the seed. I didn't tell you to get them saved. I told you to plant the seed. I had to learn that. I had to learn that. Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from the heavens, and returneth not thither, but water, watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word, God's word, be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. Now listen, right here it says my words. When you go out there and you're witnessing to the people, don't give them your opinion. Don't give them what you think. They don't want to hear what you think. They don't want your opinion. This is what they want. They want the word of God. So right here it says, so shall my word. This right here is what's going to reach them. It says, it'll come out of my mouth. What is this? The Lord says he uses our oracles. That's how preachers preach in the spirit. That's how teachers teach in the spirit. Because he's using our mouth. So out of his mouth, his word, his mouth. And if we do it that way, what does it say? It shall not return unto me void. Amen? Amen. So if you're witness to somebody, if you're witnessing to somebody, it's got to be in the Spirit. It has to be in the Spirit. Let the Lord lead you on what to say. The slow music in the background, the invitation at the church, the slow music, the low music they play, the invitation they give you time to go up there, that's, that, that's not going to save you. Music playing in the background? I don't really like talking about the churches, but then sometimes... I have to. We need the churches. Whatever we got, that's what we, you know. They're run by man, so, you know, it's, we need to go to church. But some of the things they do, it's like, or a preacher who gets up there and says, okay, I want everybody to bow their heads. Everybody. Now, those who want to accept the Lord, raise your hand. Make sure everybody's head is bowed and raise your hand. If you got to come to the Lord because this is an embarrassment and you don't want nobody to see you, you're not doing it for real. Preachers, what they need to do, after they finish preaching, what they need to do is say, is there anybody here who wants to accept the Lord Jesus Christ? Give them 30 seconds. Give them a minute if you want. Okay. Close the service. You think because they're playing music up there for 5-10 minutes that that's going to draw them? Right here it says, they're drawn by the Father. They're drawn by the Holy Spirit. That's what reaches people to the Lord. Not programs. Not soft music in the background. And for sure, not bowing your head like it's an embarrassment to come to know the Lord. I don't know why preachers do that. I want everybody to bow their head. Now those who want to accept the Lord, raise your hand. I don't know, where in the heck did they get that from? It is not an embarrassment to come to the Lord. You hear me? You must be led by the Holy Spirit when you witness. Because if you do, it shall not return unto me void. That means what you said to them... Is going to take root. Got to be led by the Holy Spirit. The, the seed is what has life in it. The Word. Not us. Leviticus 19.19 19 says, It says not to mix your seed. Meaning, don't use God's words with your opinion. You give them the Word of God, but then you put your two cents in. You, hear, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? The Lord said not to mix your seed. Meaning, don't mix my Word with what you think. And the reason they have... Now listen to this. Well, I've, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. The reason they were able to bring 100 times, 60 times, or 30 times more than what they planted, this is the reason why they were able to do this. Acts 2, 46 and 47. And they, continuing daily... I've taught you all this before. And they, continuing daily... 
with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord, and the Lord, the Lord added to the church daily. Are people getting saved daily in your church? You know why? Because it's, it's in a stinking building. Sometimes I get mad. Churches, what I tell you, house was in the houses, in the neighborhood. People were getting saved because churches were in the neighborhood, not on the street corner. People pass by our church all the time. They don't care what's going on in there. As long as we leave them alone, they don't care what the heck we're doing. But right here it says, they, had, they were continued daily in the temple. Daily. It wasn't just once a week or maybe twice a week with them. They met daily in the temple. The breaking of bread from house to house. And they did eat meat and gladness, signals of heart. What we did tonight, we had food. Now we're having teaching. That's the way they did it. And what does it say? Praising God, having favor with all the people. Having favor with all the people because people were seeing them. They could see them because they were in the neighborhood. And this is the best part. And the Lord, and what I've been teaching you, the Lord added to the church daily. We don't have that anymore. There's no church out there that's being, that's being added daily. Such as, such as should be saved. Acts 5.42 And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Do we preach and teach Jesus Christ daily? Now, do you see where we're messing up? Do y'all see it? The Amish? I'm telling you, the Amish are not from, far from, from being the way God wanted it. They separated themselves from the world. They live what they believe. They do not let, allow the world to come in and change what this says. Do they live for riches? No, they take care of each other. If one person, one family has a, if one family has a problem, what do they do? They all get together. They all help each other. That's the way God meant it to be. So we can learn from the Amish people. They separate themselves from the world, just like we should. We need to get back to the Word of God, people. We meet once a week. We go to church maybe twice a week. The Scriptures, the Word of God, said daily. We need to repent. And ask the Lord to forgive us that, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll go to church on Sunday morning, maybe even Sunday night. Wednesday, uh, I'll try to get Wednesday in. But that's it. Two days out of seven, that's all you're going to get from me. We need to repent. I meet with the Lord daily in there. Well, not daily. Thursdays is my day off. I don't get behind the computer. I don't read. I don't do nothing on Thursdays. Tomorrow is my day off. But other than that, I am in that room with the Lord daily. I just love the Word of God. I just love it. That's why I like. I love studying. I love to study. I love it when the Lord opens the words to me and shows me what He means, what He's saying. That's that's my excitement. That's my joy. Okay, and I want y'all to have the same thing.